Have you ever wondered what could cause the world's largest economy to crumble almost overnight? Imagine this. The year is 2008. The world watches in shock as the seemingly invincible American stock market crashes. The dominoes fall and economies worldwide reel in the aftermath. What led to this financial catastrophe? What were the consequences and more importantly, what lessons can we learn from it? These are the questions that we'll be exploring. Today, we delve into the chronicle of the 2008 stock market crash. The story begins with a real estate bubble. Picture a time in the mid 2000s when the American dream was more tangible than ever. Home ownership was within reach for many, thanks to a surge in house prices that sparked a boom in the housing market. It was an era of excess, of optimism, of belief in the unending upward trajectory of prosperity. Houses were not just homes anymore. They were investments, promising returns that seemed too good to be true. And as we all know, when something seems too good to be true, it usually is. The real estate bubble painted a picture of a thriving economy. It was a time when people were snapping up homes as if they were going out of style. Money was thrown around like confetti, creating a sense of false security that was as intoxicating as it was deceptive. Lenders, fueled by this frenzy, began offering loans to just about anyone with a heartbeat. The criteria for loan approval were relaxed, and many borrowers found themselves holding the keys to their dream homes, blissfully unaware of the financial quicksand they were stepping into. What's more, these risky loans were bundled into financial products known as mortgage-backed securities, which were then sold to investors around the world. These securities were given high ratings by credit rating agencies, further feeding the illusion of security and profitability. But beneath the surface of this booming housing market, a storm was brewing. The rapid increase in house prices was unsustainable, creating a bubble that grew larger and larger with each passing day. Economists and financial pundits warned of the dangers, but their voices were drowned out by the euphoria of the boom. It was a time of recklessness, of unchecked optimism, and of a collective suspension of disbelief. The real estate bubble was a ticking time bomb, growing larger and more unstable with each passing day. And as with any bubble, it was destined to burst. The only question was, when would the explosion occur and who would be caught in the fallout? But that, dear listeners, is a story for the next scene. Until then, remember, bubbles may be fun to watch, but they can also cause quite a mess when they pop. In 2007, the bubble burst. A phrase that still echoes in the annals of financial history, marking the start of a catastrophic downturn in the global economy. The housing bubble, a monstrous creation of overinflated home prices and reckless lending practices, finally succumbed to the pressure. The collapse was swift, shocking, and utterly devastating. The immediate consequences were starkly apparent. Homeowners across the United States found themselves neck deep in loans they could no longer afford. The default rates on subprime and adjustable rate mortgages, or ARMS as they were commonly known, skyrocketed. These were loans offered to individuals with poor credit histories, luring them in with initially low interest rates that eventually ballooned out of control. Suddenly, the dream of owning a home turned into a nightmare. Houses were foreclosed, families were evicted, and the American dream was shattered for millions. The ripples of this disaster didn't stop at the front porch though. They spread far and wide, infiltrating the highest echelons of the financial world. Several large financial institutions found themselves in a precarious position. Banks and mortgage companies that had once reveled in the bloated housing market now faced the grim reality of insolvency. The impact was unparalleled. Major players like Lehman Brothers, a firm with a history spanning over 150 years, crumbled under the weight of the crisis. The burst of the bubble marked a turning point, not just for the financial industry, but for the global economy as a whole. It was a wake-up call, a stark reminder of the dangers of unchecked speculation and irresponsible lending. But as we all know, the collapse of the housing market and the ensuing financial crisis was not an isolated event. This was just the start of a domino effect. The shockwaves from the burst would continue to reverberate, toppling institutions, crippling economies, and changing the face of finance forever. But that, dear listeners, is a story for the next scene. The collapse of these institutions set off a chain reaction. Picture a row of dominoes. Each domino represents a financial institution. 
Now imagine the first domino being tipped over. This represents the collapse of one of these major institutions. As it falls, it knocks over the domino next to it, and so on, until every domino has fallen. This is the domino effect, and it's exactly what happened in the 2008 stock market crash. When the initial institutions collapsed, it created a shockwave that rippled through the entire financial system. Banks that had once seemed invincible were now teetering on the brink of collapse. This wasn't just a few isolated incidents. This was a systemic problem, a disease that was infecting the entire financial market. And here's the thing about the financial market, it's all about confidence. Investors need to have confidence in the system. They need to believe that their investments are safe, that they'll get a return on their money. But when these institutions began to fall, that confidence was shattered. There was a crisis of confidence and it spread like wildfire. Suddenly everyone was selling. No one wanted to hold onto their stocks, not when the future was so uncertain. The result was a sharp drop in stock prices, a drop that seemed to have no end in sight. The more prices fell, the more people sold, and the more they sold, the further prices fell. It was a vicious cycle, a downward spiral that seemed impossible to escape. The stock market, which had once been a symbol of prosperity and success, was now a symbol of failure and despair. The domino effect had taken hold and there was no stopping it. The financial system was in freefall and there was nothing anyone could do to stop it. In a blink, trillions of dollars were wiped off the stock market. It was a disaster of epic proportions, a crash that would go down in history as one of the most devastating in modern times. And it all started with a single domino. The government had to intervene. In the midst of the 2008 financial crisis, as the dominoes of financial institutions began to topple, the United States government found itself in an unprecedented situation. The economy was on the brink of collapse, and without swift and decisive action, the consequences would have been catastrophic. The solution? A bailout. The government's response to the crisis was the Emergency Economic Stabilization Act of 2008. This act was a daring and contentious move designed to provide a lifeline to the financial sector, which was teetering on the edge of disaster. So, what did this Emergency Economic Stabilization Act entail? In essence, it provided a staggering $700 billion to the financial sector. Yes, you heard that right, $700 billion. The gravity of the crisis was such that a figure of this magnitude was deemed necessary to prevent total economic meltdown. This money was used to purchase distressed assets, particularly mortgage-backed securities, from financial institutions. The logic was simple. By removing these toxic assets from the balance sheets of banks, it would stabilize them and, by extension, the economy. But, as you can imagine, this act was not without controversy. Critics argued that it was essentially a reward for the risky behavior of the financial institutions that had led to the crisis in the first place. Why should taxpayers foot the bill for the mistakes of Wall Street, they asked. On the other hand, proponents of the act argued that it was not about saving Wall Street, but about saving Main Street. The potential fallout from a total collapse of the financial sector would have been devastating for ordinary people, from job losses to a complete freeze on credit. In the end, the bailout was a bitter pill to swallow, but one deemed necessary to stave off an even greater disaster. It was a high-stakes gamble that, despite its controversy, helped stabilize an economy in free fall. The bailout was a controversial but necessary measure. The 2008 crash had long-lasting effects. It was a seismic event that shook the global economy to its very core. It not only decimated investment portfolios, but it also left a lasting impression on the world that went far beyond just Wall Street. Unemployment rates soared in the wake of the crash. Jobs disappeared as businesses struggled to stay afloat amid a sea of financial uncertainty. People from every walk of life found themselves without work. Their livelihoods swept away in the tidal wave of the economic downturn. The jobless rate in the United States climbed to 10%, a level unseen since the early 1980s. As unemployment rose, consumer spending inevitably fell. With less money to spend and a bleak economic outlook, people tightened their belts. They cut back on non-essential purchases and focused on making ends meet. This decline in consumer spending further deepened the recession, creating a vicious cycle that was hard to break. The recovery from the 2008 crash was not a quick one. It was slow and painstaking. 
the global economy had taken a serious blow and it took time to heal. It was a period of economic convalescence, characterized by slow growth and high unemployment. Even a decade later, the scars of the crash were still visible. The aftermath of the 2008 crash was a stark illustration of how interconnected the global economy is. It showed us that what happens on Wall Street doesn't just stay on Wall Street, it reverberates around the world. The crash was a wake-up call, a stark reminder that the financial system is not invincible. The financial crisis of 2008 was a pivotal moment in history. It altered the economic landscape and changed how we view the financial system. It was a time of hardship and struggle, but it was also a time of learning and growth. It forced us to take a hard look at the financial system and question its vulnerabilities. The 2008 crash was a sobering reminder of the risks inherent in the financial system. It taught us that even the mightiest can fall and that we must always be prepared for the unexpected. Every cloud has a silver lining. Indeed, the dark cloud of the 2008 stock market crash did have a few. The crash was a wake-up call, a stark reminder of the importance of financial literacy, the need for better regulation, and the role of risk management. Let's start with financial literacy. The crash highlighted that a basic understanding of finances is not just for bankers or traders, it's for everyone. It's about knowing how markets work, how investments grow, and how to protect ourselves when they don't. It's about understanding that high returns often come with high risks. It's about knowing that if something sounds too good to be true, it probably is. The crash taught us that financial literacy is not a luxury, but a necessity. Next, we come to regulation. The crash was a stark reminder that the invisible hand of the market is not always benign. It showed us that without proper oversight, financial institutions can engage in risky behavior, often with catastrophic consequences. The crash led to the implementation of stricter regulations aimed at preventing a recurrence. It underlined the importance of having checks and balances in place, of having a system that can identify red flags and take corrective action before it's too late. Finally, there's risk management. The crash was a brutal lesson in the dangers of over-leveraging and over-speculation. It taught us that risk management is not just about maximizing profits, but about minimizing losses. It's about having a balanced portfolio, one that can withstand market fluctuations. It's about knowing when to hold, when to fold, and when to walk away. The 2008 crash taught us valuable lessons, lessons we must not forget. Because the most important lesson of all is this. History, especially financial history, has a tendency to repeat itself. And the only way to break this cycle is to learn from our past, to take these lessons to heart, and to ensure that we don't repeat the same mistakes. Knowledge is power. As we've journeyed through the events of the 2008 stock market crash, it's become abundantly clear that understanding financial matters is not a luxury, but a necessity. But the real question is, where do we start? Where can we find the resources that will enable us to understand the dynamics of the stock market the ebb and flow of finance. It may seem like a daunting task, especially if you're new to the world of finance. But remember, every expert was once a beginner. We all have to start somewhere. And the first step is always education. There are countless resources out there that can help you get started on your financial literacy journey. For instance, books such as A Random Walk Down Wall Street by Burton Malkiel or The Intelligent Investor by Benjamin Graham are excellent starting points. They offer comprehensive insights into the workings of the stock market and investment strategies. Online platforms too are a treasure trove of information. Websites like Investopedia offer free detailed explanations of financial terms and concepts, while blogs like The Balance provide practical advice on personal finance and investing. There are also a plethora of podcasts and YouTube channels dedicated to finance and investing, providing a more engaging and interactive way to learn. In addition to self-education, consider enrolling in finance courses or attending financial seminars. Universities and colleges often offer these, and many are available online. Here, you'll have the opportunity to learn from professionals in the field, ask questions, and even network with like-minded individuals. Now, this might all seem overwhelming, and that's okay. The important thing is to start. Choose one book, one website, one course, and take it one step at a time. Remember, 
Rome wasn't built in a day, and let's not forget the importance of staying informed. Keep an eye on the news, follow financial markets, observe economic trends. The more you immerse yourself in the world of finance, the better you'll understand it. So let's take this knowledge we've gained from exploring the 2008 crash, from understanding its causes to its effects, and use it as a stepping stone. Let's use it to fuel our quest for financial literacy, to make informed decisions, and to safeguard ourselves from future financial downturns. Stay informed, stay vigilant, and remember, the more you know, the better you can navigate the financial world.